Well, I'm going to give you are some samples, and we'll walk through that. And I want you to ask me some questions at the end of this because it's not going to be this long, the presentation, in terms of the PowerPoint, but we can open it up for questions. The administrator guides, encourages, and suggests questions as needed. So this first set of questions have to do with setting the goal. Go back, and I have given you in your paper a sample of questions and then a, paper, a format that is empty that you can make copies to pose the different questions later on with your teacher. You can encourage them uh, to ask the questions all related to that category. Here they are. They are called the W questions, or what are you going to work on? What do you want as the outcome of growing professionally here? Do you want to become a teacher that when you stand in your classroom, the students listen to you? Oh, yes, that would be nice. Well, let's just start working on that. A chemistry teacher, what do you want? Do you want somebody that you know, comes into your lab and they are you know, all over the place and you don't know what to do and the kids don't know what to do? Oh, my labs, oh yes, my labs are a disaster. All right, let's work on what are the procedures for lab time. So what do you want? These questions form the basis for pre-planning. That's way before. Pre-planning, what is the time <coughs> lesson to be about the observation and uh, pre-conference? This is the pre-planning. Here are some of the samples and you have them with you. What do you want your classroom to look and feel? Let's say that this has to do, and I chose all my questions to put to you and the, you have a copy based on classroom management and organization because that's a big one with a lot of teachers. What do you want your classroom to look and feel like? You know, you tell the teacher, maybe that's an idea. You're having a little problem with discipline, are you? Or, well, yeah, okay, what do you want? Here are some questions that I'm going to give you, or you can come up with my, until you clarify that goal with the teacher. What kind of student behavior and attitude do you want to foster while, you know, classroom management here? What constitutes a great class period in math, in science, in English? What, what makes it good? There's a beginning, there's an introduction, there's the middle, there's wrap-up procedures before the bell, you know. What happens in each of those segments of the period? How do you want your student to behave at different times? What do you mean? Well, there's some behaviors acceptable at a certain time in the classroom and another is not. Can you, you know, do you have that very clear in your mind so that you can pass that to the, to the students? So those would be kind of questions. Now, notice that as I made the questions, I was already focusing them in one particular area, which was classroom management. It may be that it's something else besides classroom management. Let's take about a very, very advanced teacher. Here's a teacher that has been in the classroom for maybe five, ten years. And they are, when you go to the classroom, they're asking the same questions, or most of the time. You observe a little bit, and then you can come up and say to the teacher, what would you like to grow on in, in this? And the teacher says, well, I don't know. I, I really feel confident. I don't know of anything. And you say, the other day when I was sitting there, let me give you a suggestion. When I came, and this is the clinical observation, I wrote, and I'm, I gave you a paper on that, and we'll go over that. I wrote all the questions that you asked, everything that was happening when you were with this particular group of students. And it's factual. It's not your opinion. It's a fact that you write. He said, the students did. The teacher said this, the students did. The teacher got up to the blackboard, the students were in the desk. The teacher asked the question, the students were answering. You do the facts. And you came at 8.05 and you left at 8.20. And you say to the teacher, here is a form. And during that question, you had three questions. Let me analyze for you the <coughs> questions. The questions were what and why, what and when. It seems to me that in the taxonomy level, on the Bloom's taxonomy, you seem to be staying at the lower type questions rather than the higher thinking level. How about moving to a higher questioning level? Hmm. 
with that kind of data that you have presented to the teacher, that in 20 minutes they had four questions, and out of the four questions, three were at the lower level, you don't think somebody will say, oh, hey, thanks. Yes. So now that teacher has a goal. Now your questions in category A for planning are going to change. They're going to be, I gave you a sample for classroom management, but these questions are going to be, ask yourself what kind of a questions you're asking. See if you can do that. And so the teacher could say, I asked the what questions, the why, the when. Hmm. Here is a copy of the Bloom's Taxonomy. You can Google the Bloom's Taxonomy anytime and find out some of the best questions on all the levels. Make a copy for the teacher, hand the teacher that, and say, look and see what kind of a questions you can ask next time in your period in English, or in science, or in history. Perhaps you need to work a little bit more up. And the teacher as a professional knows exactly what you're talking about. Now giving them time to prepare those questions in category one based on I think I want to ask more questions at the level of evaluation, which is the top level, which is judging. If you were there, what would you have done during the Civil War? If you were a soldier in that part of the South and your brother was in the North, hmm, now you're not just asking when was the Civil War, but you, you see, you're, you're taking that. And those are the kind of things that the teacher will be asking. Them. So they present that question to you, and then you will move to category two questions. Here are the categories. The D questions, what are you going to do? This means when the time comes for me as an administrator to be in the classroom, think ahead of time, what are you going to be doing? In a classroom management situation, since you narrow it, and you said, okay, I narrow it because I want the students to listen to me. I am going to always stand in certain position. I'm going to wait. I'm going to look at my watch. I'm going to start saying the 23rd song <laughs> in my head. And pretty soon. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate very much the way that you're paying attention to Need right now as we get it started, let's get it started in our lesson. And then you say to the teacher, see, it's working out. So this is what you're going to do when I walked in there, and this is what you're going to practice to do for classroom management. For, for asking questions, you have the questions down in a piece of paper. You're going to have them in front of you. This can form the basis for the actual events. The teacher says, okay, what am I going to do when that administrator walks in there during the observation? Here is the example. Do I want a small and large group this period that I'm going to stand in front of them and control my classroom? When they come to work with me, what interruptions do I allow? They interruptions everything. What do I do? I have a variety of questions here for classroom management. One of them could be just development more. Do I want partners at the lab station? What process do I teach before, during, and after lab time? If lab time is the issue, that we're going to work on it. The category three questions is what we call the E questions. You have planned, you have done the observation, and here is the evaluation, the E questions and reflection. Can form the focus of the discussion during the post-observation. Now the teacher and you come together. You plan for it. I went, I saw you doing it. Now let's get together. That still follows the clinical model, but with a little different twist in terms of the questions. Here's some examples. Did the small group do better than the large group for you, if that was what you planned to do? Well, I think so. No, I had to tweak it on this and this and that. Hmm, okay. How were interruptions treated? Were they at a minimum? Let's see. How many you remember you had? I think I had a couple. Well, there were four of them as I saw it. Oh, really? Let's compare. Were the expectations procedures for lab clear enough? Were they clear? What do you think? Well, I think I can make a different 
piece of paper posted in each station, I don't know. Uh, teachers are great at answer that when you're treating them with that respect and tell me what you think. Was the student behavior acceptable? How and why? What feedback do I want from the administrator? What do you want from me here? Is something I can do to help you? Well, they may answer, they may not. That's all right. What went well? Why do you think it went well? Well, I really felt comfortable when I stood in front of the students. Yeah, I remember you, you had really a presence there. You looked at your watch. What were you thinking in your head? I was praying. That was good. <laughs> it worked, didn't it? Um, went well. Do you think you can, why it went well? Well, because of this, because of that. Very open questions. Um, now we move to the, that was with the observation, and the last, the category four, or the P questions that I call. I think my secretary was playing with this. <laughs> the P questions are, what is your plan for next step? These questions would produce the elements to be summarized in the follow-up letter. It can be done right then and there when you were doing the post observation, or you can wait a little bit and say, come back with me, let's talk about what's going to be next. And give the teacher time to think about She'll come back next and say, you know, I like when I stood right there and this happened. Maybe I can move to this. Great idea. Let's make that one the next goal. And it helps the administrator to have these questions. What are some steps that may improve the student behavior? <coughs> what can be do to follow procedures in the large group, the lab time, plan for practice items of what to do and interruptions? Here are those questions. In here, the answer of those questions, you as an administrator can make note. And based on those notes, you can write that summative evaluation. The teachers will be doing the following. They have covered the following. This is our objective. And evaluation becomes always something perhaps they never look forward to, but at least they are not intimidated because they know that you as a principal mean growth and professional. So you have the, the forms in your hand. Take a close look at that. Right. And that is a copy of what I had in the PowerPoint presentation. And also, you have another one that is an empty one for you to use. It's a little warm in here. I see some of you waving, but Anyway, somebody can help us with that. As simple as this model may appear, these questions are the basis for a powerful approach because of the personal. Equipping the teacher to take responsibility for their own evaluation. Is the involvement of the teacher. The administrator may see the same, but the power of this approach to the WDEP, the what, the do, the evaluation, and the plan questions, lies in skillful leading the teacher to effective self-discovery. Okay. All right, questions and answers. We can walk a little bit from here and go on, maybe. I can have you a little wake up. How am I doing in time? Okay, you're flexible. Tell me when I have maybe five minutes up or ten minutes. Okay, question and answers here. Um, yes. think that would be ideal. Sure. That would, that, would that would raise the level of confidence between the two of you beautifully. Sure. Not only do I, you know, I want to come and see me on this, and then I come and see you, or I'll see you, and then come back. That's a, a, a very, very opportunity for growth. Right. Yes. Martha, it seemed like you were asking a lot of questions when you did your interview 